Hi, Julie, Ashley recipes for a sweet life. There have been lots of requests after people have seen my chocolate lace wrap videos to understand how I melt the chocolate. So finally, at long last, I'm gonna give you my melting chocolate video. I'm gonna be working strictly with white chocolate today. The same techniques are exactly what I use when I work with semi-sweet or dark chocolate, it's except that the white chocolate's a little more heat sensitive. So if anything, this is the harder chocolate to work with. So it's a good one to be showing today. I'm gonna to be going through various stages. I'm gonna show you the basic setup for how I melt chocolate. Then I'm gonna show you some nuances of how melting of pure white chocolate compares to the melting of candy melts. What happens if you seize or inadvertently get your white chocolate too hot? Can you recover it? And then lastly, I'll be talking about how to tint chocolate. So you'll see the full spectrum of things and hopefully I'll get all your questions answered that you've been asking me since seeing those other videos. Okay, for melting chocolate, some people do it in a microwave. I don't have a microwave. I don't like how microwaves cook food. And I don't like how relatively little control I have over chocolate in the microwave because things can go from just melted to too hot in a second. So I have a lot more control. I find working stovetop, here I'm working on a makeshift burner. Normally I'm working on my gas stovetop. Either one will work. And I work in a double boiler. You can buy a double boiler, you know, a pan that's double decker and already you know, suited for this, but you don't have to. You can just make your own double boiler as I have with a saucepan filled just, this one's filled about an inch full with water and I've got a bowl that nestles in top. And what you wanna make sure is that the water isn't really touching the bottom of the bowl. You just want the water there to put off steam and to gradually warm the bowl, which is where the chocolate's going to be melting. All melting of chocolate happens on low heat in a very controlled way because it's quite possible, especially with white chocolate, to overheat it very quickly. And what happens when white chocolate overheats or chocolate overheats in general is it seizes, which means it gets very thick. It looks like it's not melted. So the tendency is always to apply more heat and try to melt it further. And that just makes the situation worse. So I'm going to actually melt it properly and then overheat it to give you a sense of what not to do. I'm going to start by melting pure white chocolate. This is chocolate where the fat is 100% cocoa butter. And this is the type of chocolate I prefer to pipe with whenever I'm doing those lace wraps because it melts very fluidly and very pipably, if that's a word. Whereas things like candy melts, which are not real chocolate, instead of cocoa butter in them from the cocoa bean, they have palm oil substitutes. Those chocolates melt in a very clumpy, very unpipable fashion. So I'm starting with normal, pure Ghirardelli white chocolate. I often work with this or Calibo or Valrona. And it's nice to break it up into smaller pieces just to help accelerate the melting process. And I've got this set to low temperature here. I've not worked with this burner often, so it might run hotter than my gas oven. I get a lot of I have quite a lot of temperature control on gas. You know, you've got a full spectrum of control here. I've got a few discrete settings. So I'm gonna be watching the temperature closely, feeling it. It's gonna take a little while to warm up. You can start with warm water in the basin. I think mine is room temperature. If you start with warm or hot water in the basin, they'll get the warming process going that much more quickly. But we're just gonna set this here and gradually let it melt, stir it occasionally until it's fluid and pipable. While that white chocolate is starting, I'm gonna go ahead and melt some of the candy melts in the same fashion. I've got the same sort of double boiler situation here. Candy melts, as I said, have palm oil in them, not cocoa butter, they're not a real chocolate. Some people like to use them because they are a pure, a pure white. So that would be one reason for using them, that they melt up quite differently, as you'll see. So I'm gonna get those melting at the same time and hopefully over a period of, this might take anywhere from five to 10 minutes to fully melt these, maybe less, just depending on the burner settings, how closely they're monitored, how much chocolate you've got in the bin. We're gonna watch them closely and just see how, observe how they melt. And you don't want the water underneath boiling as that is, so I've gotta turn this down. So I don't have a lot of temperature control with this particular burner. It got boiling even on my low setting. So I've turned the burner off. I'm just hoping the residual heat from the water underneath is enough to melt this chocolate to a fluid piping consistency. So this is certainly melted enough and if anything I got it too hot. It's a little clunk, clumpy. If, and this might be an example of it getting too hot. If you want it more fluid for piping, I could still pipe with that, but it'd be a challenge. 
You can throw in some Paramount crystals, which are palm oil crystals, or shaved cocoa butter. Just a few, a few little crystals, and that'll tend to loosen it up for piping. By contrast, this is what cocoa butter crystals look like. It comes in a big block, and I grate it. So just stirring that in, those few crystals, you'll see it loosens it considerably, and it makes it much more flowable. You do want to make sure this melts long enough that all those crystals do melt. I see a little lumpiness there, so we're just going to give that a little bit more time. And I think the heat that's underneath it with the burner off is enough to get that completely melted. What I've got going is on my other burner over there, my gas stove, I've got the white chocolate melting more gradually. And I'm going to bring that over when it's melted and we'll compare textures. Chances are that'll be a little bit more fluid. Now let's move on over to my candy melts. They're just starting to melt. See how thick they are? They're going to, they're going to stay relatively thick unless I add Paramount crystals. And even though this might have looked thick to start, it's definitely thinner than this ever ends up being. But we're going to give that a little bit more time. So I've thinned my white chocolate to the point that I like it for piping. More flowy. It's not going to dribble off a spoon. My dark chocolate will, and I'm going to show you that in a second. But this is a good piping consistency. And just by that, I mean it's relatively fluid. It'll come out of the bag relatively effortlessly. By contrast, look at how this is melting. It's a lot more clunky even than that was when it was slightly overheated. And this is on a very low temperature. Now when I'm piping those laces, this is how I'll prepare the chocolate. I'll, I'll pipe, I'll melt up quite a lot in a bowl and I'll just dole it out into my cone as I need to use it. So I'll have a lot of white going and then as I need to tint it, I'll, I'll, I'll transition it off into another bowl to tint what I need to use. And I'm just going to show you what I mean by piping consistency. It flows pretty fast out of my bag here without much effort. And that's a nice piping consistency. Turning back over to my candy melts, look how clumpy they are. Really clumpy <laughs> compared to the white chocolate. And this is typically the problem I have with these. Right now I'm going to turn the heat down because I don't want to get it any hotter. And just let the residual heat here also just get, get the, any remaining lumps out. But even to pipe that through the bag, there's no way I could really pipe that through a bag with that consistency. It's clinging to the spoon. So I would most definitely, almost in all circumstances, need to either add the Paramount, the palm oil crystals, or the cocoa butter to this to thin it out. And we'll do that in a moment. I just want to get it a little smoother. It's almost paste-like. Markedly different texture than the pure white chocolate, which does easily flow off the spoon. Let's see what we can do to thin this out. So I'm going to add some Paramount crystals. I've turned the heat off this completely now. And this will help with the pipeability of this. So if you do want this pure white color, as opposed to adding a lot of white food coloring to your yellow, pure chocolate, you can use candy melts, but you're going to have to add a fair amount of Paramount crystals just to loosen them up. Relative to the white chocolate I melted earlier, I've got to add a lot more of these crystals to get it to a nice flowing consistency. Even with all those Paramount crystals in here, this one's still just a little bit clumpy. I give it a little more time on the burner and a little more stirring, and I think I should be able to pipe with that. So my preference most always, for flavor and texture reasons, is to work with real chocolate. I don't have this trouble with the chocolate being so lumpy. And the other reason I like it is just for flowability and piping reasons. I'm going to melt some dark chocolate and show you how that, how that melts up in comparison. Generally speaking, the dark is much less prone to seizing and it's going to melt much more fluidly. So I've got a, a clean bowl. You want to make sure that no water whatsoever gets in the bowl because that will cause the chocolate to seize. And I saw some drops in there, so I wanted to remove that. I'm working with pure melted, pure chocolate now, not candy melts, in here. And we'll watch how this melts and compare it to that white chocolate I just melted. Dark chocolate's already beginning to melt, and I think you can already see just by how it's swishing around in the bowl how much more fluidly it melts. This is still Ghirardelli chocolate, but sometimes it's a function of the the chocolate itself and how much cocoa butter is in the blend. My dark chocolate's melting just, just how I like it to melt, very gradually. And you can see this is a great piping consistency when it kind of just plops off the spoon. And my white chocolate was doing that too, but it was a little bit thicker. I might have gotten it a little bit hotter. So let's take a little bit of this dark chocolate, all now melted in a matter of a few minutes. 
and I'll just give you an indication of how that pipes. And I would leave this on the burner as I was piping out my lace, leave that on the burner with the heat off and periodically turn the heat up and down as I needed to get it back to the right consistency. Okay, so now just to show you what I mean by flow, flowing consistency, it just comes out of the bag. I'm hardly pushing on the bag. Now I am, and it comes out nice and fluidly. By contrast, let's tr try to pipe with these candy melts to which I added a lot of Paramount crystals, and they're still pretty darn lumpy. I can get them smoother than that, but it does take some work. You'll see this comes out much more thickly, and it, require, it requires a little more pressure to push it out. And if there are any lumps in it, of course, they'll plug the bag, and I'm having a little trouble with that right now. It's just a little too lumpy. The other thing about the, the candy melts is they set a lot more quickly. So for some of those lace wraps, that'll set before you can pipe the whole pattern, which makes it really difficult to get have the lace still be pliable by the time you need to wrap it. Here's the white chocolate to which I added Paramount crystals before because I had slightly overheated it. I want to compare that to some white chocolate I melted on my gas stove top, which has much more variable speed control. Here's my white chocolate straight off the burner. And I think you'll see that it's almost as flowable as the dark chocolate, certainly as flowable as the other white chocolate is to which I added Paramount crystals. But I don't need to add additional crystals to this if I've melted it gently. So when we talk about coloring chocolate, the key consideration is the type of coloring to add. You want to make sure you're always using an oil-based color. I use Chef Master brand both for tinting my royal icing and for that I use a water-based color. For tinting chocolate I use Chef Master as well but I use their candy color. And you'll note when you read the ingredient list that it says it's oil-based. Even the slightest amount of water in chocolate will cause it to seize or thicken. So if you use a water-based coloring, you're going to get a really clumpy effect. So I'm going to put the water-based one over here. And what you will see is this actually thicken because of the water in it. Or you should see that, let's, let's say. And it'll become much less pipeable than it was when it started. I don't know if you can see that, but I can certainly feel it under the my spoon it's becoming almost pasty kind of like the candy melts were and that's because I added the wrong food coloring to it by contrast let's add the water-based color I mean the oil-based color over here the proper color to add and you'll see it stays fluid again here's the starting consistency plopping off the spoon here's the seized consistency kind of clinging to the spoon I added a few drops to each so it should be a roughly equivalent comparison. This is a slightly different shade, shade of red. But stirring it in, you'll notice it's staying pretty darn fluid. Still a good piping consistency, and that's simply because I used the right type of coloring. So still ploppable off the spoon, still pipeable in that sense, not so pipeable. Now, if I made this mistake and didn't realize it, I could try to restore it by adding more Paramount Crystals. Let's see if that works. As you add Paramount Crystals or cocoa butter, you do alter the setting properties, though, of the underlying chocolate. So that's just something to be aware of. But I am able to restore some fluidity by doing that. So it's now more ploppable. Just to recap, melting chocolate, I find I get best control in a double boiler over very low heat on my gas stovetop. Generally, gas affords more control than electric, but my other electric oven downstairs also works very, very well. These, these, this portable burner isn't, doesn't have quite the same sensitivity. So always over a double boiler, slowly, slowly, so you don't seize it. If you do seize it, you can recover it, provided you haven't burned the chocolate and scorched it and altered its flavor, you can recover the fluidity by adding either Paramount crystals, which are palm oil crystals or cocoa butter crystals, to a certain extent. And in coloring, the philosophy there is always use an oil-based color so you don't seize the chocolate. Even the smallest amount of water will cause trouble. Till next video, live sweetly.